This news update is brought to you by. You gotta pray for Christmas. If you're feeling lucky, you could win some money. Pray for Christmas. Two hundred thousand dollars in cash and prizes. With Lime, you could win some money. Okay. It's Lime's Christmas lottery. Two hundred and fifty winners this Christmas. Oh yeah. Sign up for upgrades to super fast broadband, Lime TV, e billing, a data plan, top up $15, purchase a handset, or text 4263 to enter. This is the Barbados Today afternoon update for Thursday, December 11th, 2014. A warm welcome to you. I'm Carol Williams. It has been a major talking point during the past few weeks, but Columbus Communications says it has not suffered any major backlash from its acquisition by Cable & Wireless. Last week, Cable & Wireless got support from its shareholders for the three billion U.S. dollar deal. It's a move that has caused great concern among regional telecommunications ministers as well as consumers. But Managing Director of Columbus Communications, Niall Shehi, tells Barbados today while the company has received numerous complaints, it has not suffered any major fallout as a result of the deal. Yes, there are concerns. In terms of backlash, I mean, not major other than people have, have called in to say, and I've, you know, I'm out uh, and I meet people at events and, I, and, I speak, and they speak to me and they say, we're not happy, we, we were very happy with the fact that Flo had brought something new to the game. So, you know, what I say to them is, give us three to four months. Um, you know, you have, we, what we're looking to do is bring the best of both together. You have my commitment that you'll have at least as good a service you have today. So I think there's a, a misconception out there that people, that this is what I'm hearing is, Lime has bought Flow, Flow's been shut down, it's all going to go back to the way it was two, three years ago. And if that happens, um, it's going to be CWC, the new joint entity, will fail because our competitor is going to take all the customers. That Shehi is also confident that a deal will get the nod from the Fair Trading Commission. Applications have been submitted to the FTC, uh, which they're reviewing, of which they've come back and asked for more information, and that's a process. Um, the CTU at Lever meeting today in, in, in Trinidad to, to look at, to give their uh, view on, uh, on, the, on, the, on the merger or acquisition. And uh, the timelines, I guess, are that basically one, once the islands that are, are the territories that have, have to approve it have done it, we would like to have make the merger in the next three to four months. So certainly that's the next phase. A veteran educator makes a strong case for the Minister of Education to lift the ban on cell phones in schools. Outgoing principal of the St. Leonard's Boys School, Joseph King, says the current policy has outlived its usefulness. While he does not disregard that cell phones can be used in the wrong way, he insists they can be effective teaching and learning tools in modern classrooms. A new communications policy must be considered. Careful consideration should be given to the positive impact these devices can have on students' education. For instance, Students can engage in educational research in real time, video imaging, e reading, including embracing the concept of e libraries from which the students can access their school books through an electronic book scheme as well as utilize these devices. In other news, there's a call for authorities to urgently address the issue of domestic violence. It comes from Patricia Hackett Codrington, director of the Bureau of Gender Affairs, during a walk in the Oystens area last night, calling for women and residents to end the silence. It came mere hours after Marva Ward, a 36-year-old mother of two, was chopped multiple times about her body with a cutlass by a man. The effect of violence can pass from one generation to another. Therefore, if these issues are not addressed speedily, they pose serious consequences, not just for us, but for generations to come. Tonight, the Community Development Department stands with each and every one of you assembled here to reaffirm that eradication of violence is our business. Therefore, let us together take back the night. Police officially charged three men in connection with a drug bust of the Korean St. Philip. They are expected to appear in the District C Magistrates Court today to answer charges of possession of 54 pounds of cannabis. 31-year-old Anderson Lord and 22-year-old Dario Lane of Silver Sands Christchurch 
and 48 years old Jeffrey Aline of Hingston Gap Baxter's Road St. Michael are jointly charged with possession with intent to supply, trafficking, and importation. Barbados's black belly sheep, herb spices, and condiments have been earmarked for development, so says Ina Harvey, Barbados's representative on the Inter American Institute for Cooperation on Agriculture. Harvey, who is also management coordinator for the Caribbean region, says the initiatives are part of the 8.6 million euro dollar project for 15 Cariforum Forum countries. She says Barbados' component of the agriculture policy program will start off with 15 black belly sheep farmers in the interim and expand during the four years of the program. ECA is working on the value added end of it especially, looking to support that agribusiness of the sheep industry or the products that can be made from the meat right down to the use of the skins to make leather products, to make artisanal products, to use the logo of the sheep as a mark, a standard mark for all the products that could be Barbados Black Belly Sheep. When you look at what is done for the cattle industry in the States, for the sheep industry in Australia and New Zealand, it's a huge industry that involves the value chain right up to making a lot of souvenir and gift and craft products based on that sheep. There's regional and international news after this short break. Hi, I'm Red Plastic Bike. Anyone who knows me knows I don't like coal. Sunshine rains in my country. I love it. Yes, your sun power. To St. Lucia now, where a wanted man who has been on the run for the past seven years turns himself over to police. We get more in this HTS report. On Wednesday, the 10th of December, Steve Nupijan of Georgeville Castries turned himself into officers attached to the Criminal Investigations Department Castries. Jean reportedly fled to Venezuela back in 2007 when police issued a warrant of arrest for him in connection with a murder investigation. Nupi Jean was reportedly incarcerated in Venezuela for a few years and doing community service as part of his sentence when he escaped lawful custody and fled back to St. Lucia. He has reportedly been in St. Lucia for some time but turned himself in on Wednesday. He is wanted in connection with the murder investigation of Elry Louis of Boisdouange, who was shot to death in 2007 in what some say was a drug deal gone sour. Internationally, the main site of Hong Kong's pro-democracy protests is taken down. Last night, police began taking barricades apart piece by piece, putting an end to more than 10 weeks of street demonstrations that challenged China's communist-ruled government and captured the world's attention. Those that are not willing to walk away voluntarily are being carried out one by one and they are now under arrest officially. Um, men are carrying away the men, women have been carrying away the women all the way we've heard chanting that Si Wai Lung, you should step down. By the way, this is all being played out in the shadows of the central government building. Now, one of the men down there earlier is uh, was billionaire Jimmy Lai. Now, he has been supporting this movement from day one. And that's where we end our Barbados Today afternoon update. We'll be back again this evening. Until then, log on to www.barbadostoday.bb, subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook. You can also catch us on Izumi Media in bus terminals or screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. Also tune in to Channel 101 on Lime TV to get all the latest news and sports. I'm Carol Williams. Continue to enjoy the rest of your day. This news update is brought to you by... I won! Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. For me. To me. For me? Uh, uh. Yes. You don't need speakers, right? Upgrade to win every week with Lime. Sign up for Lime TV or broadband or purchase an iPhone 6 or Samsung Note 4. Upgrade Christmas with Lime.